The first two steps in infection are binding of the viral particle to the outer surface of a susceptible host cell and fusion of the viral membrane with the cell membrane. These events involve the binding of the HIV GP120 envelope protein to the CD4 and co-receptor proteins that are present on certain human cells, including T cells. Upon membrane fusion, the core proteins, viral enzymes, and viral RNA are injected into the cell. The enzyme reverse transcriptase copies the viral RNA into double-stranded DNA, which is now the same form as the genetic material of the host cell. This DNA copy of the viral RNA is called a provirus. With the aid of another enzyme called integrase, the HIV provirus is integrated or spliced into the host cell's own DNA. A complex system of genetic regulatory mechanisms determines what will happen next to the HIV-infected cell. Latency. In some types of host cells, cell processes continue as usual after proviral integration, and the infection is said to be latent. These cells do not support viral replication immediately, but remain carriers of the virus for as long as their DNA contains an integrated provirus. Productive infection. In productive infection, HIV takes control of the cell's own machinery to propagate itself and produce new viral particles until the cell dies. That is, the provirus utilizes the host cell's own enzymes to make several RNA copies of itself from the integrated viral DNA. Some of the RNA copies contain the genetic material for a new generation of virions while other RNA molecules code for new enzymes, core proteins, and envelope proteins. Most of these proteins are made as larger molecules that are then cut by the enzyme HIV protease into shorter, mature functional proteins. Newly formed core proteins, together with the viral RNA, are packaged together into a bullet-shaped core. Newly formed envelope proteins are inserted into the host cell membrane. The assembled cores migrate towards regions of the cell surface where new viral GP120 and GP41 knobs have been inserted. The envelope around each core particle is pinched off from portions of the host cell membrane and a new virus particle or virion is released, ready to infect another target cell. Cell death. In most infected cells, the process of budding occurs slowly and does not affect the host cell. However, in some infected cells, this process occurs so rapidly that the cell ruptures and is literally dissolved or lysed, and the cell dies. HIV infection can also trigger programmed cell death, or apoptosis of T-cells.